With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. In the wee hours of Saturday morning, the Senate passed the Protect Reproductive Options Act, also called the PRO Act, which would codify in state law an individual's access to reproductive health care. Here are some highlights. We were told at different times that our inquiries were frivolous. We talked about 32-week abortions, 36-week, 39-week abortions, and we were told that, that was, those amendments were frivolous. Well, maybe in the mind of the people who put the bill together, maybe, this, maybe the death of children at those weeks in fertility, maybe that is frivolous to them, but it is not to me. When you murder children at 32 weeks, 36 weeks, and 39 weeks, my friends, that's not frivolous. I would hope that as we're thinking about the votes we are soon to cast, that we would come to the realization that we are not protecting the women or the girls or even the boys of Minnesota. It was previously mentioned that this is the darkest day that some have experienced in this body. Indeed, I think this is one of the darkest days we've experienced in the state of Minnesota. Minnesotans did not vote for this extreme abortion bill that this chamber is about to vote on. Madam President, members, I'll be voting no today on House File 1. Minnesota mothers and Minnesota's unborn deserve better. This bill is sending a message to women that the best way out of a tough situation is through ending the life of their own child. Madam President, it is my sincere hope that the women of Minnesota know that I am speaking from experience today when I say they are stronger than they know. And I am sorry not one Democrat has stood up today and told them that. We went over the polling and the data of what Minnesotans want, and most Minnesotans are common sense. They don't want extreme on either end. This is not what they thought they were getting. They didn't vote for saline abortions, dismemberments, or partial birth abortions. It's definitely a sad day, a day even Minnesotans, I don't think they would, that would ever come. But we do know who will come, and who will come to Minnesota. Anyone around the world who wants an abortion with no, restri no restrictions. It's definitely a sad day. Abortion care is health care. It is part of pregnancy care. And every single person that does not have access to the full spectrum of pregnancy care is in danger. Every pregnant person who lives in a state surrounding us or in one of the 26 states across the country that is either banned abortion or plans to ban abortion is in danger. They are getting sick, like the, she did in Wisconsin. They are getting arrested, like in Texas. They are dying, like in Idaho. And in this chamber tonight, we had so many members share really personal stories. And it is really hard to share stories of pregnancy and delivery and birth and children and families. But no one's individual stories justifies using the government to force people to give birth. No one's individual story automatically translates to the outcomes for other people. Every pregnancy is unique. Every person's body is unique. Abortion is at historic lows right now. Providers of abortion care run almost primarily on philanthropy and fundraising. There is no such thing as an abortion mill. About 90% of abortions occur early in pregnancy in the first trimester. The rest that occur later in pregnancy are overwhelmingly wanted pregnancies in which something has gone tragically wrong with the pregnant individual or the pregnancy or frankly, because restrictive laws have delayed the care a person needs. Members, I've been a practicing obstetrician gynecologist for more than 20 years. And over that time, I have had the privilege of being present with my patients for some of their best and most hopeful days and some of their darkest and most difficult. 
Pregnancy can be complicated. Sometimes people want or need to end a pregnancy for a myriad of different reasons. Those are extremely personal, individual decisions. And frankly, the reasons are none of any of our business. I am here to say I will be voting for this with a absolutely clear conscience because I know we will be saving the lives of women by doing this and letting them have their own decisions. I will also say, we keep using the, the phrase guardrail, guardrail, guardrail. Uh, to me, this implies back to the old days where women were considered too emotional to make decisions or mentally feeble or whatever else, and somehow were this runaway car the people in this position are the only ones that know all the factors in their life, in their health, in the health of the fetus, and everything else. They are the only person, along with the advice of their doctor, that has all the information. We will never have that, and to me, it's just extreme hubris that we would think that we can make that decision for other people. When I heard some of the debates tonight, I, I found myself thinking, who is it that you don't trust? Is it women? Is it Minnesotans? Or is it doctors? Because there's obviously a very deep trust problem that some of the people in this chamber have with Minnesotans and with healthcare providers. Hearing some of these stories, you would think that it was going to be this murderous bedlam that was going to happen. Members, again, the PRO Act codifies into our state statute what is currently the law in the state of Minnesota, as recognized by our courts, that each Minnesotan and people who are in Minnesota, that we have a fundamental right to make autonomous decisions about our own health care. And health care does include pregnancy, contraception, abortion care, counseling about family planning. To continue following these issues and more, watch legislative coverage Monday through Friday on the PBS Minnesota channel or visit www.senate.mn and www.house.mn.